Right, so as we start into this study, there's a couple of things that I want to nail down. Um, one of them being what we're going to talk about today, which is how to interact with truth and how to let truth actually impact your life. Um, maybe a bit of this is self-serving because there's going to inevitably be some imperfections with the Bible study, surviving affliction, um, and maybe I don't want you to tear me apart because of it. But only a little bit of it is self-serving because I actually do genuinely care that you guys, that all of us are able to interact with truth and have it impact us effectively. Um, the reason that I think this conversation is so vital is because if we do not know how to talk about or interact with truth and issues and ideas, then we remain in a place of, of simplicity and superficiality. And so, like for example, like if a kid believes that monsters live under his bed, um, and pretend that is just like a no-no idea or topic in your household, um, that kid is just going to always think that monsters live under his bed because you don't deal with the issue, you don't deal with the truth around it. And I do think that we have theological monsters under our beds in the sense that we have ideas and topics and issues that we don't talk about or if we do talk about them, we assume things too much. We assume that everyone knows the truth already and that there's nothing else to deal with. Um, now social media doesn't help with that. Social media, because it is short and punchy and pictures and, and word limits and because it is anonymous so we can be irrationally angry with one another and because it's not face to face and we can't pick up on people being genuine or whatever. It just becomes this place where it doesn't help us learn how to interact with truth effectively. And so what I have here is four kind of ideas on how we can do this well that I want to share with you guys that have been very helpful to me. So number one, um, we don't make the most of truth simply by memorizing it. So we don't make the most of truth in our lives by being able to uh, spit out a bunch of theological definitions and platitudes. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. I think theology is super important. I think it's vital. Um, I mean, I've studied theology. I continue to study theology, but it is not the goal in and of itself. So just being able to define holiness, for example, doesn't mean that you're going to be holy. Just because you can communicate the idea that the entire history of the human race and your life is designed for the glory and praise of God does not mean that you will no longer be selfish and doesn't mean that you will do everything for his glory and praise whatever if you eat or drink or whatever you do. I mean, Jesus says even the demons know these kinds of truths and they shudder. And so we have to recognize that knowledge and memorization is not just the end goal. It's, it's a guide. Um, number two, we don't make the most of truth simply by... Uh, assessing it, by tearing it down, by working through the arguments. So we don't make the most of truth by seeing if everything someone says is perfectly sound and if it's not by tearing them apart and attacking them. Uh, and again, don't hear what I'm not saying. I think finding out what is actually true is important. I do this constantly. It is very important to figure out what is actually true, but that is not the end in and of itself. Number three, we make the most of truth by dealing with it. Um, this is a, harder to define, and so I'll give you an example, and then we'll kind of pick it apart. And so let's just pretend you are a Calvinist and a cessationist and a, a what, like a Pentecostal Arminian. Share something that's convicting about, say, prayer and worship. It's convicting. Uh, but it's not perfectly sound. You could use points one and two, your knowledge and your ability to dismantle arguments, and you could tear it down for the purpose of not dealing with it. You could attack the person or the idea or the fact that it isn't perfect and therefore not confront the actual idea. And so we make the most of truth when we live it, when we deal with it. Because as Calvin said, um, we don't make the most of God's word or hear God's word by faith when it flits around in our mind, but when it takes root in our hearts. Now, that is actually difficult. It is hard to live it out, and it is hard to deal with it because, uh, first off, just because it's, gen like it's genuinely hard and it's unseen. Um, it is hard to deal with your selfishness. It is hard to deal with your pride. It is hard to deal with your lust or your anger, and it's 
harder because nobody sees it. It's just this internal battle. And I think that one of the issues, or a big issue with this, is that we love looking like and being perceived as being smart and put together. And as we live out the truth, those things get confronted. And so as we deal with the truth, um, we realize how little we actually know. And as we deal with the truth, we realize how messy our lives actually are. So number three is actually live it out and actually deal with the truth, deal with the ideas. Number four is um, we make the most of truth by admitting that it is a journey and that it takes time. So to get to the depths of truth, we need more than a textbook. C.S. Lewis talks about how experience is a teacher. In fact, experience is a brutal teacher. Um, but that's an important thing to recognize, that you don't just get at the truth of God's goodness in the midst of suffering by um, studying it in a book. You, make, you learn the most by going through life and suffering and finding God to be good. And so as we move into this study, I want you guys to do all of it. I want you guys to be able to hear knowledge and learn things and memorize them and get them in you. That's number one. I want you to, number two, assess it, wrestle with it, tear down my arguments, prove me wrong. That's fine. I would enjoy that. I want you to interact with it. But number three, I want you to deal with the ideas. I want you to go deeper than just, is Josh, are Josh's definitions right? Um, and is, are his presuppositions sound? And is his logic sharp? I want you to interact with the truth personally and spiritually. Um, I don't want you to dismiss it because the truths I'm saying aren't perfectly true. Number four, um, be free to go on the journey that God has for you in the time that he has for you to do it. Like it's one of those things like we know the difference between someone who is able to communicate definitions and communicate arguments. We know how that sounds and we know how different it sounds when someone not only knows those things, but has a lifetime of experience and honesty and authenticity that goes with it. It resonates with us in a unique way. And we want that kind of truth to be in us, the kind of life-changing truth that makes it more than things we know. It makes it things we love and things we live. Anyways, God bless.